So there's this technique that you can only use in the crypto world. You can't use it for stocks, but this can give you an advantage as a trader or investor. It's called on-chain analysis. And if you ask me, it's a game changer. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you everything you gotta know about on-chain analysis. I'll share with you some of my favorite indicators and metrics to use and some limitations that you gotta know. So if that sounds useful to you at all, and I promise you that it is, then you gotta watch this video, strap in my friend, and let's dive right in. So you must have heard about technical analysis or TA before, right? That's when people on YouTube or Twitter show you their fancy charts with squiggly lines and predict where the price of Bitcoin or some other coin is headed next. But on-chain analysis is totally different from TA. It has more to do with fundamentals because we're looking directly at the treasure trove of data that the blockchain offers us for insights. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know that I'm all about this type of analysis because the makes so much more intuitive sense than what the chart traders do. So if you're a loyal viewer of this channel or plan on sticking around for a bit, then you got to understand this topic. Just FYI, you can do on-chain analysis for a variety of different coins, but this technique is by far the most developed for Bitcoin. So we'll focus on that for this video. First, what is on-chain analysis anyways? Well, you got to remember the beauty of blockchain is that it's an open ledger that anyone in the world can take a look at. We can see the current transactions and blocks floating around, of course, but we can also view all of them throughout history, all the way up to the first block that Satoshi ever mined. You may be surprised at how rich the info is that we can get our hands on. For example, we can see all the miners' wallets and if they are selling or holding, the amount of Bitcoin that each address holds, the amount of fees included in each block, how many new addresses are appearing every day, how long do people hold their Bitcoin before moving it, how many total transactions were sent on any given day. This is just a small sample of all the data you can get from looking at the blockchain. But I hope it kind of gives you an idea of the power of knowing this info. You can use this data to get a sense of the overall sentiment, see how investors are behaving on a larger scale. You can compare how these metrics correlated with price in the past so we can make educated guesses about price action in the future. Because we do have the historical price data after all. So we can just overlay that chart on top of a chart of any of these metrics that I just mentioned. And lastly, we can use it to measure the overall utility of the Bitcoin network. Because remember, Bitcoin is not only for speculation. That's a part of it, of course. But people actually use the network too to send like payments. So this on-chain analysis helps us divorce the raw utility value of the network from the speculative value. Now, I want to pause here for a sec and just ask you, do you kind of see how this is more of a fundamental approach for valuing Bitcoin. Like if we look to the stocks world, they have the popular price to earnings or PE ratio. And we can build something similar for Bitcoin by taking its price and comparing it to the current value of the network, which can be represented by the dollar amount of all Bitcoin flowing to the network on any given day. By building metrics like these, we can potentially tell if Bitcoin is overvalued or undervalued in terms of price relative to its network utility. Now, I've been babbling on about metrics, 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 but what are some examples of them? Well, you have your simple ones like number of active addresses or number of transactions being sent, but you can get fancy here and combine them to create models or ratios to get even deeper insights. Let me share with you a super high level overview of a few of them and you can take a closer look later. Like the R HODL ratio, this compares the amount of Bitcoin that's been held for one week versus the amount that's been held for one to two years. When this ratio gets high, that means there's a lot more short-term holders and the market may be overheated. The NVRV ratio is really great too. This one compares Bitcoin's current market cap to its realized value. And realized value is just where you take when each Bitcoin was last moved, take the price on that day and add it all up and do an average. So when the market value is significantly above the realized value, that can mean that price is overheated. Another popular one is SOPR or spend output profit ratio. Basically this looks at whether people are selling their Bitcoin at a profit or loss on average. And we can get a hint at the broader market sentiment because if people are selling at a loss, then that means they are really scared and we're in extreme fear mode. Now, these are just a few of the dozen options out there and I haven't even shared with you my favorite ones yet. But some other ones just to put on your radar are NVT ratio, hash ribbons, well multiple, 
reserve risk, and so many more. Remember, you can take each of these metrics that I shared and overlay historical price data on top so you can get a different picture of Bitcoin's value. And whether or not that particular metric thinks Bitcoin is overvalued or undervalued at any point in time. All right, man, this sounds awesome, but how the heck do you view these? I'm glad you asked. There's some free sites like Look Into Bitcoin or Willy Woo's sites that I'll link you down below. They're a great place to get started. Then if you wanna get real fancy, you could pay for some premium services like Glassnode or CryptoQuant. The benefit of those is that they use advanced machine learning and AI to clean up addresses and group them for us. Because think about it, right? You might be wondering, can't whales just split up their Bitcoin into a hundred different addresses so they seem smaller than they are? Well, absolutely they can. But these premium services take the time to analyze and group addresses so we can more accurately view whale balances and exchanges and kind of see which one's what. Now, hold up. I'm going to save you some money right now and just say don't pay for any of those premium services because I did and it's not worth it. I paid for their middle tiers and most of the best metrics and data that I actually want to see are in their top tier. And that costs like $800 a month. So if I were you, I would just go follow some on-chain analysts on Twitter instead, or subscribe to some newsletters that break down and share the premium data for us. Now it's time for me to share my favorite on-chain metrics to look at. The first one I like to watch is whale balances and how they're trending over time. Like the addresses that hold between 100 to 1,000 Bitcoin or even more than 1,000 Bitcoin. Is that cohort growing in number or decreasing? This is really clutch info because you already know that whales know the secrets and the behind the scenes stuff that we're not privy to. And for that same reason, I like to look at miners wallets too. And if they're holding the Bitcoin that they earn or if they are selling it. Because miners spend all day, every day thinking about Bitcoin and how to manage their business operation. So you best believe that they are analyzing the market more closely than anyone else is. Another thing I like to look at is a chart of long-term holders versus short-term holders and how that is trending over time. Because when long-term holders start to take more profits, that can mean that we're nearing a top. And another great metric related to this is the Sopper one that I mentioned earlier in the video. And the last metric I like to keep an eye on is the Bitcoins moving into or out of exchanges. This one has been super clutch lately because because when Bitcoin is going into exchanges, that usually means that people are about to dump their coins. But when it's leaving exchanges in droves, that's when they're being sent to cold storage and people plan on hodling for a long time. What do you think about my favorite metrics though? The whales, the miners, long-term holders, and exchange balances. Are there any great ones that I might be missing? Now, before you go and sell all your Bitcoin or go 100x long, when one of these metrics tell you to, there are some huge limitations you gotta know. Like one is as more and more people start to use second layer solutions like the Lightning Network, the ability of on-chain analysis may weaken. Because remember, those transactions are not sent directly on the base layer of Bitcoin's blockchain. So there may be a lot of activity going on that's completely hidden from us. Number two is that different metrics may tell a different story. I mean, some of them may be screaming overvalued, while other ones show that everything's still A-OK. -okay. You gotta consider them holistically and not just pick out the ones that confirm your bias while ignoring the other ones. And number three is that you gotta be careful when matching up these metrics with price action in the past because Bitcoin hasn't been around for that long, right? We only have 12 years of data so far. So just because some metric was perfect at predicting tops and bottoms in the past doesn't mean it's gonna work in the future. Specifically, those zones of overvalued and undervalued may shift over time as we get new data. So just keep that in mind. And lastly, number four, I personally consider on-chain analysis more of a long-term pull or magnet for Bitcoin's price. It is definitely not for day trading and can't predict short-term volatility. That's why if you do care about the day-to-day -day price movements, then you should keep an eye on TA for those purposes. So in my opinion, there is room in the world for both TA and on-chain analysis. Now, I gotta warn you right here that on-chain analysis can be flawed too. And some models are just flat out wrong. Like stock to flow has been invalidated statistically and yet so many people still believe in it. Probably because plan B is still trying super hard to cling on to any remaining relevance that he has. If you're curious about why I think it's flawed, you should definitely watch my video up here explaining that. And also if you want to get the first credit card in the whole world that gives you cash back directly in Bitcoin, then sign up for BlockFi's credit card using my waitlist link I'll leave you down below. I just got mine and have been using it everywhere. Anyways, I'll see you on the next one and cheers.